This video's got it all. Drama, beauty, an unusual holiday color combination, frustration, despair, and ultimate triumph. Oh yeah, six quick and beautiful cards that can be used at any time of the year. Let me show you. It all started in a very ordinary way. A white piece of cardstock which I stuck onto my Make Art Station with temporary adhesive. I added an extra piece of mint tape, sticky side up, to help hold my Snow Helix stencil in place, as well as one over top, and I've sprayed the back of the stencil with Pixie Spray, which should help to keep those little bits in place while I blend ink over top. I started with Sangria, which is a deep purpley red. I blended it over the bottom portion of the panel with a small blending brush from Altenew. Any blending tool will work here, but I prefer brushes when I'm using stencils, since blending foams can get damaged by the stencil edges. After Sangria, I moved to Rouge, which is more of a true deep red. My color combination was designed as a variation on a red and white color scheme, with added depth from the Sangria and then some added warmth from some Tiki Torch. You'll see as I create these cards how the colors mix to become something that looks different on every card. This snowflake actually has eight arms, but I still tried to kind of divide the panel into thirds, and I went back and forth over it, deepening the colors and trying to make sure I got some good mixes. To add some dimension to this flat panel, I lifted the mask and shifted it just a bit so there were tiny bits of white showing, and then I went over the whole panel again with another layer of ink. I think the three key tips for getting a good ink blend are 1. Having good quality, well-inked ink pads. These Catherine Pooler inks are juicy, and I try to keep them that way by using the refills whenever they start to feel a little sticky. Number 2. Color choice. Colors that are next to each other on the color wheel will blend a lot more easily than those that are further away from each other. And finally, number three, layering it up. The more ink you put onto the panel, the more times you go over the blended area, the smoother it will be. And going back to these inks, Catherine's inks tend to smooth out even more as the panel dries. Another way to smooth the blend is to spritz shimmer spray over top, and I've done that to all my cards today. It adds a beautiful sheen that's subtle in daylight, but at night under lights it becomes really sparkly. I finished all of today's cards in the same way with a simple sentiment from Waffle Flower. To be able to quickly stamp four at a time, I used my Misty in a square piece of cardstock that I turned and stamped. I used Versafine Onyx ink, which is a pigment ink that stays wet, and that gave me the time to emboss them with halo embossing powder to add even more sparkle. When I heat emboss, I use this foil lined shoebox lid to hold the piece so that my fingers are not close to the heat gun, and also so that the warping is reduced since the foil reflects back some of the heat. I use the coordinating die to cut them all out. I love the white space around the sentiment to help it stand out from that intensely colored background. I glued them flat to all the cards so they'll be easy to mail, although of course you could pop them up. I also didn't add any embellishment to these cards since the background and the sentiment are sparkly, but of course you could do that as well. Next I'm using a rather large 9x12 stencil called Lotus. Now you might not think of getting such a big stencil if you're a card maker, and in fact I always thought they weren't really made for us in our little works of art, but watch this. First, I can see that there's a beautiful pattern that starts from the center and radiates out. But because of the size, I can actually turn the stencil to get a different look. I placed the center of the pattern in the center of my panel, and I started with that darkest sangria ink working in a circular motion. Then I added rouge ink, and I went right to the edges. I worked in layers, starting light and adding more and more until I got good coverage, and then finally I cleaned off the edges of the stencil so that I could come back in with the tiki torch, just to warm up the very edges of the card without contaminating the ink pad. I worked that tiki torch around the whole panel and you can see that the two colors are mixing to create a lovely warm corally red. This stencil is gorgeous but it has lots of little free edges that could move if you don't get them stuck down properly and that's why I use pixie spray on the back of well all these stencils today. I sprayed them a few minutes before I started blending and it'll come off with some soap and warm water when I'm done. To finish this one, I used one of my Essential Squares dies that cuts a narrow frame on an angle to form a diamond in the center. This helps to draw your eye into the center of this beautiful floral design. And here's another look you can get with this same stencil because it's this big. This time I lined it up so the center of the pattern is on the bottom of my panel. I didn't even clean it. I'll just use the same colors in the same places. And now instead of a floral look, I think I've almost got like a peacock tail kind of thing going on. Again, I started with the sangria in the center of the pattern and I quickly transitioned to the rouge. 
I added Tiki Torch on the outside and I let that fade out to white along the top of the panel. And then I went back in with the rouge to get that coral color I like so much. Imagine this in greens and blues and purples. Now you can't easily do this with your six inch stencils. To finish this card, I turned it on its side and now I'm getting kind of a poinsettia vibe. So far, lots of beauty, color and drama, but no despair or frustration. It's coming, just not quite yet. For the next card, I created a mask with some copy paper and a circle die. I used temporary adhesive to stick it to my panel of white cardstock, and now everything's protected and I don't have to worry about keeping my blending too controlled. Here's another 9 by 12 stencil. This one's called Starburst Tiles, and it's really fun, but I'm just going to use one of the tiles. I positioned it over top of my open circle area, and then started with the rouge ink this time, since this is really my main color. I went in a circular motion, letting the color lighten as I got to the center to create some dimension and to get it to look a bit rounded. It's always fun to use shading like this to create the look of dimension. Then I added some of that sangria to the bottom edge and some of the tiki torch to the top. You'll see when I lift this stencil that I could have done more of both and gotten an even more dramatic result. Some of that temporary adhesive transferred to the panel, so I just got out my adhesive remover and cleaned it up before cutting down the panel to a square and adding the sentiment to finish it up. Now I'm going to turn this stencil because I could see another pattern in it, but only if I tilted my head. The intersection of four tiles actually looks like a star, and that's kind of cool. Look at that top right corner. I didn't notice it at the time, but that frame ended up cutting off my pattern, but I'll show you how I fixed it in a second. This time I blended yellow in the star area. I could have masked it to get crisper definition, but I like the blended look better. I went back in with the rouge around the rest of the panel and then finally came in with the sangria just on the edges. When I removed the stencil, I could see that corner. Normally I would just cut it off, but my star was really too high for that. So I ended up just putting the stencil back on, finding the pattern, and then just filling it in by blending more of that sangria ink. All better. This time I used a rectangle die to add in another narrow negative frame. Can you believe these two cards came from that same stencil? Are you ready for the despair and frustration? Here it comes. I had a vision, and that was to use this Helix Flower stencil with the Stencils 360 tool. If you haven't seen this tool before, I'll link to my playlist below so you can see the amazing things you can do with it. The stencil's 8 inches, so I got out the 8 inch stencil guide and I taped the very tip of each petal to the guide. Then I started blending my ink. But that tape wasn't really covering enough of the stencil to give good stability, and it kind of flopped around and I knew I wouldn't get crisp results. And I couldn't use pixie spray on this one because the whole point of this tool is to turn the stencil and have it moving on the paper. But the heaviness of my ink blending was really too much. So then I thought, what if I try sprays? That way, I don't have to put pressure on the stencil and it won't matter if the placement isn't completely stable. Well, that just made a big mess and the result is kind of pretty, I guess, but not at all what I wanted. I almost gave up then. As I was cleaning up all that overspray, I thought back to the tool and the fact that an 8 inch stencil really creates a pattern too big for a card anyway. So I thought I could use the 6 inch stencil guide ring. This gave me plenty of surface area to tape and that created the stability I needed. I started simple with just the rouge ink. I used the measurements at the top of the tool to figure out that I would need to turn this stencil just twice to get three impressions that would change my eight petal flower into a 24 petal flower. After the first one, I lifted the stencil to see what I was getting and I was happy with that. That's exactly what I was expecting. I put the stencil guide back in place and moved the guideline to the first square marking on the base, which is at 15 degrees. Then I blended the rouge ink through again. At this point this was a trial run, so I wasn't bothering with the other colors quite yet. Here's how it looks after the second round of ink blending. Okay, now we're talking. I put the stencil back in and I turned it for the final round of blending and look what I got. Not bad for a trial run, but I knew I wanted to add in that depth and warmth of the other two colors, so I simply put the guide back into the base and I added the sangria on all three turns, then the tiki torch. The guidelines make it really easy to line everything back up exactly where you need it. This design is absolutely stunning and I can't wait to try it out with different colors, but for now I trimmed it down with a square die and then I went back in and used a sponge dauber to fill in the white center with sangria ink before spritzing it with the shimmer spray and adding the sentiment. Look at all the dimension in that design. 
Playing with these larger stencils has really opened my mind to the possibilities they hold, even for card makers. These stencils were designed by Karen, who's a fellow Canadian and a super talented mixed media artist. She's sharing a video to show you that no matter the size, you can use stencils for any kind of creative project. So click right here to head to her channel for even more inspiration. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.